opposition, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Yesterday we heard of the tragic death of a young man on the Bibby Stockholm. I know the whole House will want to send our deepest condolences to his family and friends. We must never let this happen again. I would also like to mark the retirement of my colleague and friend, Mark Drakeford, the First Minister of Wales. Mark committed his life to public service and lives his values every day. Quietly and patiently, Mark has been a titan of Labour and Welsh politics, and we thank him for his service and wish him well. Mr Speaker, Christmas is a time of peace on earth and goodwill to all. Has anyone told the Tory party? <laughs> well, Mr Speaker, Christmas, Mr Speaker, Christmas is also a time for families, and under the Conservatives we do have a record number of them, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, to this point, a year, at the beginning of the year, I set out some priorities that this government would deliver for the British people. And over the course of this year, we have, Mr. Speaker, inflation halved, Mr. Speaker, the economy growing, debt falling, action on the longest waiters, the boats down by a third, and crucially, as we heard from Honourable Friend, tax cuts coming to help working families in the new year. Mr. Speaker, he can spin it all he likes, but the whole country can see that yet again. The Tory party is in meltdown and everyone else is paying the price. Now, he's kicked the can, he kicked the can down the road, but in the last week his, his, MPs, his MPs have said of him he's not capable enough, he's inexperienced, he's arrogant, a, a really bad politician. Well, they're shouting, this is what they said. So, well, come on, come on. Who, who was it who said he's a really bad politician? Hands up. <laughs> They're shouting. Well, what about inexperienced? Who was that? <laughs> or and now there's got to be some hands for this. He's got to go. Oh, shy. Apparently, he's holding a Christmas party next week. Ha Order. Order. It's Christmas. No, the cri <laughs> But you might not want the Christmas present that I could give you, so please, yes, Lama. Apparently, he's holding a Christmas party next week. How's the invite list looking? <laughs> well, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I, I, I thank the uh, honourable gentleman for all the comments. Uh, what I would say to him, he should hear. He should hear. I, I th he should hear what they have to say about him, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Yeah. Right. Do you want to be the first one? Because it is Christmas, and I'm going to hear it. My constituents are going to have a Christmas like everyone else. They want to know how their Christmas is going to be affected. So I want less of it from all sides. Keir Starmer. Speaker, they've obviously found the donkey for their nativity. The search. <laughs> The search of three wise men may take a little longer. Uh, but while they fight amongst themselves, there's a country out here that isn't being governed, where more than 100,000 people are paying hundreds more a month on their mortgages. Energy bills going back up in January. The economy shrinking again. NHS waiting lists an all-time high. Doesn't he think the government would be better off fixing the messes they've already made rather than scrambling to create new ones. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Mr Speaker, he talks about governing and spent the first two questions talking about political tittle-tattle, yeah. Mr Speaker. What a joke! What a joke! Well, let's get on to the substance, Mr Speaker. Let's get on to the substance. He mentioned the things. What is the news that we've just heard in the last week? Well, what's the most important thing? The most important thing is education, Mr Speaker, because that's how we spread opportunity in our country. And what have yeah. we learned? Where are the schools performing best in the United Kingdom? In England, Mr Speaker, thanks to the reforms of this Conservative government, rising up the league tables, giving our kids the start they need, and where are they plummeting down? In Labour-run Wales. He, 
he talks about children. Nearly 140,000 children are going to be homeless this Christmas. That is more than ever before. That's a shocking state of affairs, and it should shame this government. Instead of more social housing, house building is set to collapse. Instead of banning no-fault evictions, thousands of families are at risk of homelessness. Rather than indulging his backbenchers swanning around in their factions and their star chambers pretending to be members of the Mafia, when is he going to get a grip and focus on the country? Mr. Speaker, let's just look at the facts. Let's look at the facts, actually, because rough sleeping, rough, rough sleeping in this country is down by 35%, Mr. Speaker, since it speak, thanks to the efforts of this government. There are hundreds of thousands of fewer children in poverty today, thanks to this government, Mr. Speaker. And when it comes to home building, again, what are you doing? We just had the data this last week. In the last year, an almost record number of new homes delivered, Mr. Speaker, more than in any year of the last Labour government. 140,000 children homeless this Christmas, and he's utterly tone deaf. And the rise in homelessness shows how these Tory crises merge and grow and damage the country. Families like the Bradys in Wiltshire, both parents working full time with two young children, forced out of their home of 15 years by a no-fault eviction, now living in their van. Or 11-year-old Liam Walker, homeless this Christmas. He wrote a letter to Santa saying, please can I have a forever home? I don't want any new toys, I just want all my old toys out of storage. I just want us to be happy again. Is there anything that could shame this government into putting the country first, then it's surely this little boy. Mr Speaker, if you really care about building homes... No, 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 no. If you really care about building homes, when, when there was an opportunity in this House, Mr Speaker, in this House, to back our plans to reform defective EU laws, to unlock 100,000 new homes, Mr Speaker. What did he do? What did he do? He went in front of the cameras and said one thing and came in here and blocked it. Typical, shameless opportunism. Thank you, Mr Speaker. He hasn't finished. As the world one more. So, Mr Speaker, is that really his Christmas message to Liam? Cocooned in his party management breakfast. He just can't see the country. Order, order. Mr Cleverley, please. It's Christmas. I want a little bit of silence. And I'm, I'm going to get it one way or another. And that goes to each side. Here's Starmer. Cocooned in his party management breakfast, he just can't see the country in front of him and what they've done. I'll finish by thanking hard-working families across Britain who kept our country going. It's been an impossibly difficult year for so many. I want to pay special tribute to our key workers, particularly those in the emergency services and those serving abroad in our forces, who, even at this time of year, are doing the vital work of protecting their country. I wish everyone, including the members opposite, a very happy and peaceful New Year. Will the Prime Minister join me? Prime Minister. I think, I think, I, I think Mr Speaker, he, mi- he, missed, he, mi- he missed that I paid tribute to our emergency workers at the beginning of the session, Mr Speaker. But let's see. No, because I think it is important, because he talked about working families. Of course, Mr Speaker, I want to make sure that we support working families, and that's what we're actually delivering, Mr Speaker, because all he has to offer them is borrowing £28 billion a year which all it will do is push up their mortgage rates and push up their taxes. Meanwhile, what have we done? Delivered tax cuts for millions of working families, boosted the national living wage, Mr Speaker, recruited 50,000 more nurses, 20,000 more police officers, improved our schools. We've cut the cost of net zero for those working families. We've cut the boat crossings by a third and we've halved inflation. And that's the difference, Mr Speaker. We're getting on and delivering for working Britain. Stephen Hammond.